So this is a place where folks can come and try telephones and other devices to make sure it'll work for them before they decide to purchase it. Our demonstration room is actually named for our former director, Cheryl Hefner, who worked really hard getting folks to make sure that accessibility was part of their plans when they were developing new technologies. So come on in. Welcome to the demonstration room. Since my camera person has a mask on, I'm going to take mine off so that you all can hear me clearly. This is our space for coming in and trying things out. So when folks make an appointment, this is where they'll come and sit down with us. I'll sit down with folks and talk with them about the kinds of situations they're experiencing. Um, are they having trouble on the telephone? Or is it more one-on-one? -on -one? Is it dealing with background noise, like in a restaurant or listening to the TV? And then we can try different devices to see what might work best for them. Of course, we have folks sign in when they come in so we know how to get in touch with them if we need to. And of course, in the time of Corona, we have hand sanitizer. We ask everybody to wear their masks while they're here in the office. And when they're here to handle equipment, we have disposable gloves that we have them wear. And of course, after each visitor, we wipe down all the equipment to make sure that it's clean and ready for the next time someone comes to try things out. We have a lot of different kinds of devices, as you can see. Let's start over here. We have what are called emergency dialer telephones. So these are amplified telephones that you can program uh, automatic dial numbers in for your friends and family. And then you wear an emergency trigger button. So if you fall or have a problem, and you hit the button. The phone starts calling your friends and family. And it will keep calling until it gets a live person. So it'll start with the first number and dial the next number and dial the next number until it gets a person. And then plays a pre-recorded message for you. So it may say, if you're hearing this message, I need help. Please come to my house. Which can be very helpful for friends and family. There are cordless amplified phones of different types. The important things to look for are those volume controls as well as tone controls. So the volume makes it louder or softer and tone adjusts the frequency. Do you hear the high sounds better or the low sounds better? So that you can adjust the phone to match what you need for hearing people better. And we have a live telephone line here so that you can make calls to friends or family to see how it sounds before you make a decision. They have corded amplified phones as well. Again, you're going to get that amplification to make it louder, as well as the tone control. Sometimes, no matter how much you amplify it, you just can't understand folks on the phone. That's where a captioned phone might be helpful for you. There are several different types of captioned phones. When you make calls, the captions appear on the screen. So you hear their voice and you also have a printout of what they say as a backup. So if you didn't quite catch what it was they said, 
you can look down at the screen. And that's really helpful, particularly when you're calling places like doctor's offices and you need to get times and dates. Having that as a backup really gives you control over your telephone calls. There are also television listening devices. These are devices that can hook up to a television set. You may wear a stethoscope device like this or headphones that go over your head that again give you more control over the amount of volume you have. You can adjust the volume, adjust the tone. Maybe you just need the sound closer. You could set up a speaker right next to your seat that will bring the sound that much closer to you. We can also show folks how to set up the captions on their television sets to make sure that it's more accessible. TTYs. Now some folks may be saying, oh, TTY is so old fashioned. Everybody has switched over to video phones. But for some folks, a TTY is still useful. Um, maybe you don't live in a place that has high speed internet connection. Maybe you still only have a telephone line and you still need to be able to make telephone calls. Or folks who have speech disabilities can use what's called hearing carryover and call through the relay service to make their calls. I'll talk more about the relay service in just a minute. Then we have signaling devices of many kinds. Whether you just need the telephone louder or the doorbell louder, or maybe you need to flash the lights. You can have wireless doorbell systems that will do that for you. This one even has a bed shaker in case you're asleep when that doorbell rings, but it can alert to many different things. The doorbell, the telephone, uh, a baby crying if you have a family. So you can get these devices in a modular system and you only use the parts that you need. There are alarm clocks of many different kinds. Some of them even have wireless bed shakers. So you charge it up during the day and put it under your pillow. There are now Bluetooth bed shakers as well that you can put in your pillowcase. And you use your cell phone to set the alarm and sync it with the Bluetooth bed shaker. And when your alarm goes off, the bed shaker goes off. Really important one, smoke detectors. Whether it's a traditional uh, smoke detector like this, it's got the very bright strobe light. This is a hardwired one, which plugs into your house's hardwired system. But they do also make portable systems as well. And there are systems that will set off a bed shaker. These have very loud alarms and very bright strobe lights to make sure that you wake up. If you do not have a visual smoke detector in your home, first of all, if you rent your home, talk to your landlord. It's their responsibility to provide visual smoke detectors upon request. That's under the Code of Virginia. If you own your own home, talk with your county's fire department they may have a program to provide visual smoke detectors. And of course, down here at the end, we have personal listening systems or personal amplifiers. So for folks who are not sure if they're ready for a hearing aid just yet, um, or maybe they need to send their hearing aid for repair, this can be kind of that interim device. It lets you turn up the volume on the folks that you're talking with. 
whether that's one-on-one, -on -one, going to the doctor's office, or in a small group, meeting friends for dinner, uh, playing cards, that sort of thing. These can be really helpful. And you can use headphones like this or earbuds, depending on what you're comfortable with. If you do have hearing aids already that have a telecoil built in, actually both hearing aids and cochlear implants that have a telecoil built in, you could use this with a neck loop to help block out background noise so that you can concentrate on the folks who are directly in front of you. And of course, there's different models of that, as well as FM systems. With an FM system, you have a receiver and a transmitter, so that when you go to a meeting or a lecture, you give the transmitter to the speaker, and you keep the receiver with your headphones or earbuds, so that you can adjust the volume to where it's comfortable for you. A lot of different things out there. Much of the equipment here uh, has been donated to NBRC, but there are also devices here that are available through the Technology Assistance Program, which is provided by the Virginia Department for Deaf and Hard of Hearing. The Virginia Department for Deaf and Hard of Hearing manages this program, and it focuses on telephone and signaling equipment because they want to make sure that you stay connected with your friends and family and that you know when someone's trying to reach out to you. So it applies to amplified telephones, caption telephones, a voice carryover or hearing carryover equipment, and then also signalers like the telephone or doorbell. System. Here in this room, we've marked them with a little tap indicator that these are the devices that are available through the technology assistance program that program is a, is a uh, application service so nbrc has the applications for that program and we can help you fill out the application and design and decide which kind of equipment is going to meet your needs this program looks at how many people live in the household and what the monthly household income is. And they use that to determine if you qualify for free equipment. If your income's below a certain amount, you get equipment for free. If it's above that, you can get it through the state at cost, which is lower than what you might find at a retailer. You can use that equipment for up to 30 days to make sure that it works for you. If you decide you like it during that time period, you let us know and it is yours. If it's not working for you, you let us know and we switch it out and try something else. So it's really helpful. Now, not everybody wants to go through the state program and that's cool. NVRC does not sell any equipment. Remember, we don't want anybody to feel pressured when they're trying out these devices. But we can refer you to vendors that do carry this equipment. If you don't wanna go through the state program, you just wanna go ahead and buy something, we can let you know where to go for that. I mentioned before about the Virginia Relay Service. The Virginia Relay Service was set up so that folks who are deaf or hard of hearing using specialized telephone equipment can call folks that don't have that. So when I mentioned the TTYs before, years ago a TTY could not call some, you could, so a person with a TTY, sorry, could not call somebody who did not have one. They had to go through a relay service and that's what the relay did. It facilitated that communication. As the technology has evolved, so has the Virginia Relay. It still provides that traditional TTY to voice relay. 
but it also provides other services. It supports the caption telephones that we talked about earlier, because there is a relay operator involved. They are functionally invisible, but there is a relay person there making sure that that text comes up on that telephone screen. There's also the services like hearing carryover for folks who have speech disabilities, voice carryover, and services like speech to speech relay, which assist folks who have speech problems in making phone calls. Perhaps folks who have cerebral palsy um, or other issues that affect the way they speak, they can go through the speech to speech relay to get support with making those phone calls. So the Virginia Relay Service is there to support us. All right, let me just double check here, make sure I covered everything. So thank you all for visiting our, uh, our demonstration room today. We appreciate you taking your time out of your evening to come and join us. Um, like I said, folks can get in touch with us. They can give us a call. They can reach us by email. Uh, we have video phone as well and TTY. Uh, so you can get in touch with us to make an appointment and come out to the demonstration room to try out devices and see what might work best for you. We'd love to see you. And of course, we're taking all the precautions. We're wearing masks, gloves, making sure that everything is wiped down. So we'd love to see you. So now we're going to go ahead and shut down this part, and I'll run back to my desk um, to open up the Q&A and see what questions you all have for us. And Bruce, if you wanted to take this time to tell folks about tomorrow night's uh, Zoom meeting, that would be a good time. All right. <laughs> So that was our demonstration room. And now we wanted to go ahead and open it up for questions and answers. Um, so if you have a question that you'd like to ask, we can either have you type it into the chat box or you can turn on your, uh, your video and your microphone to ask directly. Okay, one of the questions in the chat box is asking about the caption telephones and it asks if they have languages other than English. Great question. Right now, I believe that it only offers Spanish as another language. I know that they've been looking into adding more languages over time, but right now it's available either in English or Spanish. Another question is asking about, can a hearing aid be connected to a TV through Bluetooth? Great question. Hearing aids are changing fast. <laughs> uh, and more and more of them have Bluetooth technology. Many times you have to work with your audiologist to get the devices that will work with your particular hearing aids and connect with your television. But yes, it is possible to get a device, if your hearing aids are Bluetooth enabled, get a device to connect to your television that will stream the sound directly to your hearing aids. One thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about uh, Virginia Relay. Virginia Relay also offers a service called Remote Conference Captioning, or RCC. 
This was developed for folks who are needing to join conference calls where they would need to call in to a conference bridge, but needed cart or some other text support in order to follow the conversation. So that's what RCC does. When you have a conference call that you need to join, you can contact the Virginia Relay and set up an appointment for a remote conference captioner to join the meeting with you. And they call into your meeting and they send you a link to the streaming text. So that way you can join your conference call, open up the captions on your computer and follow along. And I believe actually tonight we are using our CC with our Zoom meeting. So that is an option that you can use if you're needing to join Zoom meetings as well. There was another question here um, about if Virginia Relay provides video relay services. I, you know what, I'm gonna have to double check that. I will double check on that. I don't think they provide direct video relay services, um, but I believe they support video relay among all the different relay services. So I will double check that and I can send that information out to folks. Remember, if you prefer to sign your question, you can go ahead and turn on your camera and uh, to ask your question. That is an option. Now, some of you all may have noticed that a lot of the phones, actually all the phones uh, in the demo room are actually landline phones. Um, we don't deal directly with cell phones and mobile phones. That technology changes even faster than what we have in the demo room. Um, but there are great resources to find a cell phone or mobile device that can work for you. Uh, websites like accesswireless.org can help you search for a phone that will meet your needs. Whether it's hearing loss, uh, vision problems, mobility issues, it can help you find those devices that will meet your needs. Um, looking for those mobile phones that have high microphone and telecoil readings, for example, or that are compatible with your hearing aids that you can use a neck loop with to plug into the device. There are also lots of apps that folks can download to their mobile devices, whether you're needing a captioned phone, um, there, are there are apps you can download to have captioned phone calls on your cell phone. Video relay calls, you can download apps for those on your phone as well. There are apps like FaceTime and Duo where you can make direct video calls to folks and have direct conversations with them. Someone's asking about home visits for senior citizens who need help with these devices. We have just started back to taking appointments um, with the demo room. We're still talking about how to handle home visits correctly right now because we want to make sure that the folks we're visiting stay safe and that our staff say stay safe. But yes, we have done home visits in the past and we are looking at the ways we can provide that again. Um, so if someone is not able to travel to come to our office, we can take a look at the options 
for how we can demonstrate and help them choose devices for their home. And Eileen did put the accesswireless.org website in the chat if you need that. Someone's asking about um, what kinds of precautions are we looking at when we're considering going back into people's homes? Um, making sure that everybody has masks, that we are cleaning properly, um, taking making sure that we clean the equipment after every single visit because um, we really want to make sure that everybody stays safe right now. But folks can make appointments to come to the office. Um, we will make limited appointments during the week so that we don't have too many people in the office at the same time. And we're also extending time between our appointments so that when we clean the equipment, it has time to really get clean. But we'd love to, we'd love to see folks again. Just scrolling back through here, making sure I didn't miss any questions. Thank you, Bruce. I wanted to clarify, um, there's an app called Duo, um, which functions very much like FaceTime does on Apple devices. So if you have an iPhone or an iPad and you have FaceTime, Duo can do the same thing for an Android device. It's also nice that Duo will actually work both on iPhone and Android devices so that it will let you communicate between those devices, which is helpful. Are there any apps that you all are using that you really like, you, that you find useful? Um, let us know about them. We love to share information with our community. We have our email news. Aha, Bruce has just put up uh, a, come on brain, a survey. <laughs> um, it says, what is your face favorite voice recognition app? So if you're in a situation where you need somebody to speak into your phone and have it print out what they're saying, do you use one of these apps? Let us know. Right, some of these apps are only free up to a certain amount of minutes. And after that, you have to pay for an upgrade. So it does depend on, you know, what works on your phone, first of all, and whether it's free or limited minutes, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, that is one of the challenges that we're finding is that some of the apps have a limit. Someone's asking if anyone uses Wavello. W-A-V-E-L-L-O. Wavello. I think that's a Sorensen app, right? I have not had a chance to check out Wavello. Um, that, that's on my list to investigate and try. So if you've got any feedback, please let us know. Yep, Google Live Transcribe, unfortunately, only works on Android. We've, there's some great apps out there, but they only work on one or the other, either Apple or Android. And that can get really frustrating.
So has anybody here used Wavello? Is it any good? Oh, thank you, Bruce. Bruce has put the app, uh, the link to the app uh, in the chat box. And as I understand it, it lets you do like a video chat on your mobile device. Okay, so through the Wavello, it gives you a video chat. So you can see the person that you're chatting with as well as seeing the interpreter. So like making a video chat call with an ASL interpreter in the call. And you can see the other person at the same time. That's really helpful for folks who read lips as well as use sign language. Yes, Ava, the app Ava, A-V-A, is a free app um, and has options. That one's a really interesting one too because if several folks download it and then all join the same meeting, the app will tell you who is talking and it'll give you the name of the person who's saying what. I believe Ava may have maybe one of the ones that has a limit on how often you can use it um, or so many minutes a month. And if you pass that, you then have to um, pay for extra minutes. Someone's asking about having both captions and an interpreter on Wavello. Like I said, I haven't had a chance to check that out, but definitely worth investigating. It would be great if we could get the interpreter and see the other person and get the captions, all the communication access that we can get. This is awesome. Thank you guys. I appreciate all that information. Okay, another comment about Ava. It's free up to a maximum amount of time. Um, they do say that the paid premium version is much faster. So that's kind of weighing the benefits. You know, you can use the free version, but it's got that limit. Or you can pay the monthly or yearly fee. Um, and it may be a better product for you. So again, you have to kind of take a look at how are you using the technology? Um, you know, are you using it once a week? Are you using it every day for a month? It just kind of, it's, again, what are your needs? That's where sitting down with somebody and talking about the kinds of situations you're encountering can be really helpful. Someone's asking about the apps for caption telephones. Um, Hamilton Relay has a CapTel app. I believe Sprint also had one. I'd have to double check that. Um, there's another one called InnoCaption. And these are apps that you can download to your mobile device. Uh, very often you have to have a Wi-Fi connection as well as your cellular connection to make sure that the captions come through. But again, it gives you that ability to make telephone calls and have that text back up on your cell phone or mobile device. Some of the um, landline closed, er, back up. Some of the landline caption telephones are CapTel, Caption Call, and clear caption.
different services provide those. Um, so depending on which phone you get, you'll, you may be dealing with a different captioning service, whether that's Sprint or Hamilton Relay um, or one of the others. All right, well, so make sure you check out, you know, the uh, Virginia Department for Deaf and Hard of Hearing, which is vddhh.org, as well as Virginia Relay, varelay.org, okay. uh, for more information about the services that they offer, like the captioning that we have tonight uh, for our presentation. And check out nvrc.org to see what we offer to contact us and make an appointment to come visit the, the demo room or even just to sit down and talk about the challenges that you're having. You know, whether it's the telephone, the TV, going out with friends, because um, sometimes it's not always high tech, you know. Um, maybe it's changing the behaviors of the folks around you, which can be challenging, but still an option. And finding those solutions together can make a big difference. All right. Any other questions, any other comments that folks have? Devices or, or caption, uh, bonk, <laughs> devices or apps that you uh, have learned about or use? Because the more we share information together, the better we all are. Um, whether it's using live transcribe on, uh, on an Apple device or Google live transcribe on an Android device, finding what works for you. Actually, I think the um, for the Apple device, I think it's actually transcribe live. And then for the Android device, it's Google live transcribe. It gets flipped around. <laughs> but when you go to the Apple store or Google play and try to download it, it'll tell you which one is available for your phone. Uh -huh. Okay, apparently for an Apple device, there is the live transcribe and it's a new app for them. See, always something new. But if you think about something later, um, whether it's a question or a technology that you found out about, please email me. You can send it to info at nvrc.org because I like learning about all this new stuff and we share it on our email news. It gets incorporated into our presentations. Um, you know, we've got the tried and true devices like the landline phones, those captioned phones, signalers, but our technology changes all the time. So we wanna know about it. If you've heard about it, we wanna know about it. You can email it to us, give us a call. Support from audiologists is key also. Absolutely. Absolutely. We get contacts from audiologists as well, um, asking us about questions about what their consumers can use. And then we also contact them and say, hey, somebody told us about this device that works with the hearing aids. What do you know about it? Um, it's, it's getting everybody involved to find the best solutions to make communication easier. Excellent link, thank you, Christina. She just added a link to um, an audiologist blog in the chat box, so we can check that out. All right, 
like I said, if you think of something later, get in touch with us. We'd be happy, you know, maybe we have to do some research, like I need to check on whether video relay uh, is provided by Virginia Relay because my brain is drawing a blank on that. So I will check that out and get that information back to you all. Thank you all tonight for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it.